Hi everyone! Today I am hoping to make a really big piece of versions of these little pieces that I've made uh, about a year ago. These are 10, 11 centimeters in its diameter, uh, but I want to make really big ones. As the name suggests, there are colored moons, though we only have one moon, and we have moons of this in this size, which should be about 55, um, which is just about what my kiln can, uh, can take. So I hope to do that uh, through beating. Uh, one of my other videos shows you how to, do a, how to make a slab with uh, this tool here by basically beating uh, down the clay and this whole Colour Moon series actually emerged from uh, the idea of um, taking uh, a bar the Barbican building which is in London, it's a brutalist building with a concrete facade which is quite rickety so I took a big piece of slab and I actually got a cast of the building and then I casted the slab that I took to the barbican into a plaster mould uh, which were pressed in and these were the um, small versions of it but I want to do a mega big piece from this facade which um, I tried on a slightly bigger disc about 35 centimeters and I realized that it was quite difficult to pr imprint using the squares because it will get all the edges so what I did is I got little sections of it um, cast it in smaller pieces to kind of do like a stamping on a bigger slab that I'm going to uh, make today so stay tuned I'm going to make the 55 diameter slab um, with this amount of clay which is in the entire bag of uh, this which is about 12 kilos I think so kind of it was a rectangular shape I kind of cut it in half and put it together so I could um, do a more even circle so I will have to take this down I think quite gradually because it's just so so heavy and I guess I don't have enough muscles um, so you know to make a slab it's always better to start with a fairly hard um, you know a fairly hard clay so it's easier to handle so this clay is is called terracotta crank uh, despite being terracotta uh, it has been it's guiding Firing range is up to 1200, but I managed to um, fire it to 1240 uh, for a glaze firing and it was okay, no cracks, but this is another risk because um, I'm making it bigger uh, and it has a lot of grog in it, so it, it gives you the strength you need for uh, bigger pieces uh, if you're taking it a bit higher temperature. And the reason I'm uh, using this much clay is um, I want the disc to be fairly thick so it doesn't crack but then also there's you know if it's thick there's also a chance of cracking during firing but um, I think it will look nicer if it's a bit thicker than uh, the sample you saw which is about a centimeter and a half. I hope I can make it about an inch thick and it will survive all the fire drying and fire. This is 
is actually nice as it is. Just for a sponge because it's a bit hard on the hand. This is when I want bigger hands. Because as it gets, uh, as the slab gets thinner, uh, you don't want, uh, you want to move as flat as it can because there's a chance of cracks but also it may warp. So um, what I would do is I would um, wedge uh, the clay between two boards and then flip the whole board so the Clay is uh, clay has um, minimum um, movement. Right. So I think a very strong person will be able to flip this on their own, but I don't think I can. So I'm going to borrow a pair of pants. One, two, three. Hold at the top. Yeah. Perfect. And also, when you um, when you uh, hit both ways, the slab becomes uh, stronger. So the scent is always going to be thicker, so I'm trying to push the clay. To the from the center out. Ooh. A bit more. This is why you want your clay to be fairly hard so it doesn't stick to the board when you've actually, it's wet clay and then if you bang it, if it's not hard enough, it's going to be completely stick to the board. So this is why I've been saying, you need your clay a bit hard. Nearly. So what I'm doing here is because I'm a bit short, I want the thickness but I don't want to um, thin it anymore so I'm just going to add a little bit more clay on the top rather than the edge and then um, uh, push it out for a little bit more, uh, a little bit more um, Length. 
ideally when you add more clay, uh, similar wetness. This end and that end. So this is going to be the back of the slab, and um, ideally, uh, I would put a silica sand. Um, so when it shrinks, you know, it has a little bit of gap for it to kind of move. I'll put it on normally on the board, and then. Um, Put the clay on but this is so big to transfer uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to just do the reverse just going to put it here Try and and then put the board on top and then flip it um, this last thing you want is the slab not coming off the board or it's drying on the board. I will eventually um, dry this on the kiln shelf that it's going to be fired in. But for the moment, until I finish making, I will dry it on the board. But you don't want it to... Um, it will slowly shrink. You don't want it to be... You don't want it to crack as it's drying. Drying is as important as firing when it comes to um, like more bigger work. So. Right. so now um, I will put the board and flip and do the imprint on the uh, face up slab. So the slab is now big enough. Um, this is a, a rubber kidney just to give a smooth surface. It's not just big, but because it's big, it's so physical doing this. Right, so actually, I have to confess, I actually have not used this. Um, they're not the best well made uh, plaster uh, pieces, but I've actually not used this before. I just um, uh, made it hypothetically thinking that it will actually, it should, that it should work. So let's see. So maybe I go with the most. Um, most uh, dramatic ones so Things were actually having these lines marked, but I might be okay. I will have. 
have to go around erasing those lines, but I should have made this at the moon landing's 40 or 50th anniversary a few years ago. I missed the chance. When I was a kid, well, I say kid, I was 20 when it turned millennia, I'm giving away my age, but I thought when it became 22,000 and even like 2022 20, and we're in now, I thought the cars would be flying and we'd be going to the moon for honeymoon or something. Well, I guess you can do that now if you have, you know, a few millions to spare, but um, life hasn't really changed that much. Uh, of course it has changed but not to the extent that I thought it will happen I remember counting down on on New Year's Day New Year's Eve for 2000 I thought everything will stop and I don't know what I was thinking I thought everyone was not gonna die but I thought something dramatic will happen that midnight and it was um, it was actually like a lukewarm I was out in Seoul and um, it's like, oh, it's another same day. <laughs> probably that, is, that was a, probably a good thing. <laughs> but I don't know what I was expecting. I wanted something, like some sort of a big bang or something to happen, which didn't. But yeah, here we are. Still not be able to go to the moon for an easy, quick honeymoon, but we're still here. I'm South Korean, you may uh, have heard or, you know, uh, from my other videos or maybe on my website. So if you ask any Korean um, and ask, um, what do you see in the moon? They will say, I see a rabbit. Whereas I think it's very different if you ask a Brit, I think they say they see a witch or something, witch on a broom. We say a rabbit, a rabbit, um, making rice cake you, you it couldn't be any more <laughs> uh, i want some bits of white perhaps like hard because I will glaze in a way that you have some raw surface of the actual clay um, so it'd be nice to have a lot of it I think will be covered in glaze but um, Someone with a very keen eye will pick up the repetition, I think. Mm. 
but hopefully no one does. I think, I think this is enough fun. Um, what I will do next is basically to cut it to this template. You see, yes, it's perfect because um, it was almost just when I made the slab, but because of all the imprint uh, pressure, the uh, clay has squeezed out a little bit, which is uh, perfect for me. Maybe it's gone a bit thin, but I think it's okay. So what I will do is now cut it to the template and, and, um, and cover dry, or cover it, maybe like two days, come back and um, because this will be a wall hanging piece, I will do, I'll make some holes at the back so um, it could hold a couple of screws when it's hung on the wall. I can show you that um, in a few days. So what I will do is I will just go around by the way if anyone's wondering what that sound in the background is um, it's my kiln um, um, having a bisque fire at the moment, so that's what the sound is. So what I all, what I now have got to do is just trace this um, line that I've marked, and um, just smooth the edges a bit, and um, the top is finished. Yeah, when it's thick, it's better to go over several times than trying to cut through all at once. It, it will have a cleaner cut that way. So voila, we have the moon. So um, I will let this dry, I will cover it with plastic, kind of loose, and then um, let it dry up a bit. And in maybe two days, I'll flip and do the back, I sign it, and then we'll have to wait a few weeks for it to fully dry and get, get it into the kiln. So thank you for watching.